Hello there, this is Dr. Norman Thomas, and I want to welcome you to Power Talk tonight. Listen, tonight, what we're going to do is something a little different. We recently hosted a panel of professionals, mental health professionals, that were able to talk to us about the role of the church along the lines of mental health. You know, it's a real thing, and I believe it's important that the body of Christ understands our responsibility to those that are suffering from issues around mental health and to promote mental health in the body of Christ. And there is a way to do that. And there is a biblical way to do that. I know you're going to enjoy this session tonight. So stay tuned for this special episode of Power Talk as we talk about mental health and the church. Join us for our next in-person encounter here at New Life Church International, 3000 East Goche Road, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas look forward to seeing you. For your safety, facial coverings will be required. Now you can help us serve our local community and bridge the gap of food insecurities among families right here at home. New Life is currently receiving canned good food items only. Your donations of canned food items will make a difference for so many families affected by the 2020 hurricanes and COVID-19. Learn ways in which you can help today. Call or text us at 337-433-1111 or visit us online at nlcinternational.org and click on Food Bank. Giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. It is one of the greatest privileges that I have to have you here today to help us understand the need that we have in the church uh, of awareness. I think one of you in our discussions before we started the recording talked about awareness. Uh, I guess just to open things up, we can start with you, Dr. Debbie. What is the greatest, in your view, the greatest uh, let's say, the, the greatest mental health need of the church? Yeah. Well, for me, it would really be that the church gets a good understanding of mental wellness, that God has a definition in His Word. He has scripture in His Word that talks about mental wellness. You know, it's been a stigma that people don't like to talk about mental illness, but what about mental wellness? And so that's the angle that I think would be a great advantage for the church today to understand God's message of mental wellness. That's awesome. And Tanya, what about you? Um, for me, I think it would be um, similar to Dr. Debbie's is that the church would um, understand that there is no shame when it comes to taking care of your mental health and um, the need for mental wellness and mm -hmm. the partnership between your prayer life and seeking the help that you may need uh, from a professional. Okay, Ms. Christie. Building on what Dr. Debbie said and Ms. Tanya, I would say in addition to those factors, yeah. people need to own their issues mm -hmm. and ask for help. Mm -hmm. Don't walk around with a mask pretending like everything is okay. You have a, a body of brothers and sisters mm -hmm. yes. to love you, care for you, help you. 
There are professionals that can guide you and get you out of those deep, dark places into a better place, mm -hmm. a place where God intended us yeah. to live, yeah. to walk, to be, to talk, and to serve Him mm -hmm. in wellness. Mm. Awesome. And Miss Brittany? When I think about the greatest need, I think in regards to just recognizing what mental health looks like individually and collectively, but also how to cope with it as well, mm -hmm. um, I definitely believe that's a really big need. Mm -hmm. And I, I, would just, I would just like to say that uh, mental health is a real thing. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. And that's been sort of a, a mixed bag in the church, uh, just acknowledging yeah. the, the validity of mental health and that it's not a reduction of one's faith to make that acknowledgement, yes. but it, it is an enhancement of one's knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. that is going to aid them in their spiritual journey Sure. for their deliverance. Yeah. Ms. Christie, you made a comment earlier about truth, about understanding the power that truth plays mm -hmm. in one's mental health. Would you expound on that? Yes. In my practice and in the years of working with others, I've found that people that are struggling with anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. other mental health issues, often are unaware that those began early on in life. Mm -hmm. Many of those issues begin when you're young. Mm -hmm. If there's abuse, if there's trauma in early childhood, the enemy has no new tricks. He lies to us all the time, just yes. like he did Adam and Eve. But when a child is wounded in their soul, mm -hmm. he's there telling them that's their fault. They're never going to m amount to anything. They're worthless. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. And a child will, will push those feelings and those thoughts down, thinking if they don't think about them, they'll go away. Many times as people, uh, adults, will do the same thing. But the problem is it remains and it fuels us and it points us sure. in the wrong direction, sure. just like a magnet in our pocket will throw off sure. our compass. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is face that with courage, mm -hmm. with someone that has the knowledge, the understanding and the wisdom to know how to apply that mm -hmm. so that we are able to change the meaning of the past not the memory of the past. That's good. When we Let know me. that truth of who we are and we know and understand the truth of what happened to us, then when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. That's the word. And that's God's intended purpose. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And that, that brings me to a place to, I think also, I'm just remembering now the things we talked about before we, mm -hmm. we started this session. Ms. Tanya talked about strategies mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, understand the spiritual implications and that our yeah. prayers and our declarations are the weapons that we use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what good is a weapon mm -hmm. without knowledge on its use Absolutely. and a strategy okay. to apply its use. Okay. Can Absolutely. you expound on that, Ms. Tanya? Sure. So, you know, as we discussed earlier, we use prayer um, in our lives as a weapon, as believers, as Christians. That's one of the ways that we have learned to fight battles. Mm -hmm. However, when we put that together with the, the practice, therapeutic practices and going to someone to get strategies of how to utilize the weapons that we that we hold so oftentimes we can show up in a battle mm. and we're fighting 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 but if we don't have any strategy we often are fighting a losing battle yeah. and so we have to learn that you know what i need um and how a how to how mm -hmm. do I get out of yeah. these feelings of overwhelm and anxiety and depression and trying to figure my life out after um, a, a storm or a COVID-19 or whatever is going on in your life and you're trying to pull the pieces back together and if you accompany that with the things Ms. Christie referred to as with childhood trauma, Beautiful. it becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. 
and people need to figure out the how to's accomplish getting out of this. And so we fight in prayer and we believe and we trust God and God has blessed, as you said, pastor, and anointed people mm -hmm. to help you build Come the on. strategy yeah. and process through the emotion that you're experiencing and can't seem to just get over it on your own. Wow. Yeah. Now, Dr. Absolutely. Debbie, would you uh, agree that that represents what you referred to earlier is that intersection of mm -hmm. faith Certainly. and mental health, yes. uh, the emerging of creative ideas to, to merge the two? Absolutely, I really do. It's really um, getting a clear definition of God's desire for us is that Third John mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 2 text that says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper. It's like God has our best interest in mind. And so now we're getting to the point where we receive therapy. Mm -hmm. We use our prayer life to win the battles mm -hmm. in the mind. It is an intersection of, like Miss Tanya was talking about, mm -hmm. that prayer and, you know, the mental health therapy that we do as professionals. I think what we want to offer people today is suggestions and ideas and direction yes. on understanding having good mental health. Yes. That's what we're about. Miss Brittany, uh, today is an example of something you refer to in terms of the need for awareness mm -hmm. in the church. Yeah that we can turn a Sunday morning into hmm. what we have going on right now. Absolutely. Still minister the word of God mm -hmm. with clarity mm -hmm. and grapple and deal with, or not, not so much grapple, but teach people how to be victorious mm -hmm. in, in their approach to their own mental wellness. Mm -hmm. You want to expound on that awareness piece that you talked about earlier? Absolutely. I believe, you know, awareness, it starts with knowledge and mm -hmm. also it comes with being open and transparent mm. about how are you, starting with that, hey, where are you at? How mm -hmm. are you doing? Helping people process their feelings and emotions. Um, in my field, working with children, a lot of times they are combat it with fears and anxieties, but they think this is their normal way of functioning because they haven't been maybe, if you want to use the word challenge, to have a conversation to say, well, hey, what does home life look like for you? Or um, what do you think might be causing these emotions? Could you describe it to me on how do you typically feel on this day in comparison to this day? And helping them walk through that and help them to see it's okay that you're not um, I guess something's wrong with you because you're feeling this way, helping yeah. them to see like, it's okay. I'm yeah. here to walk this out with you that knowing that. Um, I love that the perspective we're coming in with this, with that, with a Christian perspective, because when we're having these conversations, we can share with them the love of Christ and help them to see like the same way that you can share with me your heart is the same way you can come before God and yes. the same way he invites us to share um, our, our anxieties and our worries and our yes. concerns. There's a yeah. reason because if not, they are weighed down. Yeah. And it yeah. does happen to impact their adult way of functioning. So mm -hmm. it's such a need, even for children so young, to learn how to cope with these different emotions mm -hmm. now at their age. So when they get older, they can process it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's excellent. <laughs> it is. You know, one of the greatest challenges, I believe, uh, in the body of Christ is just really understanding the Word of God, which is that truth that we referred to earlier, mm -hmm. and its application to your mental well-being. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. that anxiety and worry mm -hmm. should not be the prominent thing in your life. That's right. That in the Amplified, it talks about even do not stress about anything, have mm -hmm. any anxiety about anything, yeah. but in its place, prayer, supplication, with mm. thanksgiving. Mm. And, and that's what we referred to earlier about the practice of spiritual mental health with the tools and the weapons that we have, Absolutely. but the strategies for using them. Mm -hmm. When we get this together, verse 7 tells us the outcome. It says the peace of mm -hmm. God 
will overwhelm you. Yes. And it will cause you to have victory in Christ Jesus. And so yes. we're believing with you and for yes. you today that whatever challenges you have, whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, whether it's relational or spiritual, that you're going to get the keys and the nuggets that you need today to start your journey of health, especially that of mental health. We're going to take a break, but we're coming right back. One of the first places people call when challenged with mental health issues is the church. What is the role of the body of Christ when helping those with mental health struggles? The church has a responsibility to attend to needs of the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. The soul is the seat of the mind, the will, and the emotion. The Bible tells us that we are only able to prosper and succeed in life in direct proportion to the prosperity of our soul. To get help today, you can call or visit the website of the following organizations. Focus on the family. You can call them at 1-855-771-HELP. Help. Or you can visit them at focusonthefamily.com. The National Alliance on Mental Health, or NAMI. You can call them at 800 950-6264 or N-A-M-I dot O-R-G The Hope and Healing Center and Institute You can call them at 832-831-7337 or visit them online at Hope and Healing Center dot O-R-G Thank you for joining us back again. Dr. Debbie, uh, I know that it's been your experience throughout the years as you have worked closely with people from a different wide range of concerns and challenges. Tell us about trauma in the lives of people and about how that trauma uh, is, has or can affect a person's outcome in life. I would love to begin with the, the whole piece about trauma. I'm just thinking about the past year and a half that we have just gone through and the number and types, the compounded traumas that we've all experienced. So, you know, trauma to me by definition is this overwhelming inability to manage what I generally am able to manage, the challenges that come into my life. I, now I can't, I can't do it, I can't deal with it. What would normally be a stress with these compounded traumatic experiences, people aren't able to function under these conditions. And so during our break, we talked about some of those conditions and I would like to give Miss Christie an opportunity just to address the area that you were talking about with regard to trauma and past experiences. Yes, Dr. Debbie. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence in its many forms and fashion sort of grows its roots from trauma. Mm -hmm. I've had Men in corrections say, Miss Christie, can you please help me? Why do I beat my wife? Why do I abuse my children? Why do I molest these children? And it all goes back to that distorted thinking, okay. that distorted perspective of I'm worthless. I'm never going to amount to anything. No one's ever going to really love me. No one will stay with me if they know me. I'm always going to end up alone which brings them to the issue of control. And on the other side of that coin, there are women feeling the same thoughts, believing that same lie from the enemy and thinking they have to stay in that abusive situation, that they some way deserve that. Uh, it also lends itself to people acting in ways that they believe themselves 
to be. But just like the angel spoke to Gideon, it cowering in the basement, he called him, the angel called Gideon, who God created him to be. Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. When that rhema word hit his soul, his spirit, mm -hmm. he got up and mm -hmm. performed the miracles that God had planned for him. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful, yeah. though, to see how God addressed Gideon? Yeah. He did not address Gideon on the level of Gideon's current awareness of himself. That's right. He addressed him on the level of his creative being. Sure. And like you said, when he got that revelation, it raised him up to that level and he was able to function. So what you're saying is, is when someone who has experienced this trauma of domestic violence becomes enlightened, they're able to see differently mm -hmm. yes. and respond differently. Ms. Tanya, I'm sure that you've seen this play out in marriages. Absolutely. You and Pastor Glenn, as you've yeah. counseled many couples. What's your take on this? It's uh, very similar to what Ms. Christie was talking about. You know, oftentimes, and here recently, mm -hmm. working with couples where we realize through working with them that many of the challenges and the issues that they're having within their marriage stem from their childhood trauma, stem from experiences that they had in their childhood, and they feel the need to protect themselves mm -hmm. from their spouses. And that's because I feel less than, I don't feel valued, I don't have trust, I struggle with being vulnerable, and so working with couples and teaching them, okay, do you, do you realize that this isn't necessarily about your husband or about your wife? This is about an experience that you had many, many mm. years ago that, were, that was never healed. It's a, an unhealed wound mm -hmm. and that now needs to be dealt with. And so being able to walk couples through that process of healing and realizing that, you know what, my, my enemy is not, is not my spouse. The enemy is my enemy and he's utilized this moment of time in my life to, uh, to build this, this mm. difficulty in my life for many, yeah, many absolutely. years at this point. And so being able to help people to realize and recognize the root of the trauma and begin to undo that root and to, to free them in Christ that they can live holy and freely and have an abundant life in their home with their spouse. Yes. So it, I'd like to just to have you guys think about when we talk about trauma mm -hmm. um, and, and that it's a wound. Yeah. But it's a wound that you can't put a Band-Aid on. Sure. So... People are finding it a little bit more difficult to deal with, you know? It's an emotional wound. Yes. So how do you start wound care on an emotional wound? Where is it? Mm -hmm. What get, gets lodged in that person that now needs to be healed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, for example, with the kids, with mm -hmm. the children. Yeah. If you're a child and you receive the one, that emotional wound, mm -hmm. What, what might be going on in that child's life as a result? Absolutely. You know, the thing about trauma, when it impacts families, it impacts the children included. Um, and, it's, and it's a ripple effect, honestly, if it's not dealt with, oh, if it's not good. spoken about. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've noticed with the children I've worked with that have experienced trauma, it's connecting them to resources. Mm -hmm. It's utilizing counselors and therapy and saying, hey, it's, they're not too young. The same way that adults go through things and they Beautiful. process things, so do children as well. Wow. Um, children have a way of processing, and a lot of times what they observe has an effect on that way of processing. So inviting them to utilize those different resources to say, hey, I'm going to connect you with a counselor. Let's start therapy because the, the things that you went through is, is a difficult thing. And we need to make sure we, you're with somebody that can process that with you, to process those emotions, because sometimes they can be pretty intense. And you can get stuck there sometimes if you don't have someone to walk you through that or mm -hmm. help you to understand that and process that and help mm -hmm. see how mm -hmm. we can heal from this experience and keep moving forward. So it definitely has an effect on children as well. In practicing the meditation of the Word of God, 
and it, either one of you can speak to this, but in practicing the meditation of the Word of God, I have found that it, it helps to reshape the inner image that I have. A lot of times, you know, people get caught up in quoting scripture and making prayer confessions as to make God do something. But as we understand it, God has done all mm -hmm. yes. that he's going to do. And what we must do now is receive what he's done. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't move God, per se, as much as it shapes us to receive. Wow what God has already done yes. on our behalf. Yeah. So in that, I'm looking at this whole concept of shame, mm -hmm. this whole concept of self-condemnation. Ms. Christie, you alluded to it earlier, uh, about treating ourselves in the fashion in which we think we deserve to be treated. Mm -hmm. A lot of that's rooted in shame. Yes. And according to Romans uh, chapter 8, I believe, uh, it talks about there being no condemnation. Am I right about that? Yeah, eight. Yes. About there being no condemnation to those that are in Christ. But it flips me back to what we said earlier, Ms. Tanya, about having the tools, mm -hmm. but having the strategy. Mm -hmm. How do, this is a readily available tool that we have at our disposal as believers in Christ mm -hmm. to not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. to not be in a position of self-condemnation, how do we translate that into a real practical way for someone, per se, that is not at a place of, of proficient practice of meditation? Mm -hmm. How do we get them started with this? Ms. Christie. I would like to say self-condemnation, anger at self, Despair is anger turned inward, I like to say. But they have to learn how to forgive themselves. And this is a truth that I've had to teach throughout the years. Mm -hmm. If a child or a victim of a trauma sure. is forced to forgive the perpetrator, mm -hmm. the one that hurt them, the one that caused their pain, without the ability to place the responsibility of the wrongdoing on that individual. Yes, that's key. Put the wrongdoing on the individual, then you can forgive them. But if you try to make somebody forgive for, say, a sexual molestation, and the child has said that they're, that's your fault, or they're told that, that's like seals their doom, the despair, you know, it seals yeah. their shame. Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to help people walk through forgiveness of others and forgiveness of self. And the meditating on God's word helps us understand how to let those things go yes. and put that in the hands of a mighty God mm. yes. who is a righteous judge. Dr. Debbie, you for years have practiced the concept of soul care. Certainly. And implying that the care of the soul is contingent upon mm -hmm. every other area of prosperity in our lives. Sure. And how do you connect that to this area of shame and condemnation as well? Uh, I wanted people to be aware that we are tripart beings spirit, soul, and body is how God made us. And so when he did that, for each one of those areas, he's given us the word. I think it's Psalms 119 or Psalms 19 that says the word of the Lord is perfect for the healing and the ministry to my soul. Mm -hmm. It's like exactly what you need. So meditating on that word, just meditating, Psalms 19, verse 7 and 8. The word is perfect for yes. the healing of my soul. Just ministering to just that thought life. And my revelation this morning, this is my time of meditation, that God is giving us a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. He's telling us to think differently. Yes. That 
we've not made progress in the last year and a half because we won't change our patterns of thinking. But what you have assembled here today, Pastor Norman, is a host uh, of guests that are willing to walk with people through this process of dealing with shame, guilt, condemnation, wrong thinking, inability to make right choices, overwhelming trauma. You know, as a professional and as a believer in Jesus Christ, I wanna say that I'm here. I'm here for you. We wanna bring hope into your life this morning. We want you to be better. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is caring for ourselves, first of all, in a way that we can care for you. So please call for therapy, ask for help. It's okay. And that's what we're here to say. It's a good thing. So, so good. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go to another break. And in this break, we're going to give you information whereby you may be able to reach out uh, for that help that Dr. Debbie so eloquently spoke of. And so that you don't have to feel that you're walking and going through this journey alone, that you have spirit-filled believers that are available to you to help you walk this journey out. And when we get back, we want to talk to church leaders. We want to talk to pastors. We want to talk to ministry staff on how you may be even yet more effective in helping people take this journey to their mental wellness. We'll be right back. One of the first places people call when challenged with mental health issues is the church. What is the role of the body of Christ when helping those with mental health struggles? The church has a responsibility to attend to needs of the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. The soul is the seat of the mind, the will, and the emotion. The Bible tells us that we are only able to prosper and succeed in life in direct proportion to the prosperity of our soul. To get help today, you can call or visit the website of the following organizations. Focus on the family. You can call them at 1-855-771-HELP. Help or you can visit them at focusonthefamily.com. The National Alliance on Mental Health, or NAMI. You can call them at 800-950-6264 or nami.org. The Hope and Healing Center and Institute. You can call them at 832 831 7337 or visit them online at hopeandhealingcenter.org Today what we have is a conglomerate or a, a, a gathering of professionals that are born again believers and spirit filled that's important because to be carnal is to have a mindset void of spiritual understanding. And as a believer, when you pursue counseling, it's good to know that your counselor is connected with God. That way you're not coming down in a sense to get the help that you need. You're staying in that realm of the spirit so that you can maintain the growth that you already have spiritually. It's so important. So just because a counselor is not saved or born again doesn't mean they're bad, mm -hmm. but the context of their understanding, the context of their learning is key. And when it's spiritual, it matches yours. Your context will match theirs. So that's why I'm, I'm suggesting that. Now, so what we want to do is in our closing time here today is offer any ideas or suggestions that we can give to pastors, say, or to staff of churches, to counselors in churches. Uh, not that you don't know, but it may be helpful to even add to your proficiency 
in your services to the people that come to you for help. So, Ms. Brittany, mm -hmm. I want to start with you in terms of children. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things that uh, service providers for our children in the church mm -hmm. can look for and be aware of? Um, I believe when working with children in this type of way, um, it's so important to, well, first, I just want to communicate to that leader, you are doing amazing. Um, know yes. that as a shepherd, I know it can be a little interesting, but also know with children, each child is different and each child is beautifully unique. So with that being said, when you're in this position, when children are, they might come to you, some might come to you and verbalize, but also it's important to be aware that some might not. And it's important to know what it looks like sometimes when a children is hurting. So oftentimes with depression or anxiety, a lot of people isolate themselves. So you might see that oftentimes with children, they slowly begin to just isolate. And as a leader, I, I believe it's important sometimes to bridge that gap and say, hey, I see you. God sees you, I see you, and I'm here for you. And always keeping that door open for communication. Um, I love it in scripture where it says in Psalms 34, um, verses 17 through 18, where it says, when the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Amen. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Thank so you. it's so important in that shepherd position to make sure you to communicate to that to children, letting them know they're not in this by themselves. When you're ready to talk, I'm here. And I want just letting them know that I always see you and so does the Lord. Um, so really utilizing that position to be aware of what it looks like yes. um, of their emotions, but always remaining available to be there for them as well. That's so excellent. And, and, and also, uh, I must say, personally, I want to thank you for your service here at New Life Church and, and the service that you provide to children. And that is a point I want to make here is that the, fam the, 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 the panel that we have, they're engaged in ministry. They're engaged in, in church ministry and, and have been over the years. And so they're not foreign to the integration of mental health, wellness, and church ministry. And that's why they're here today sharing with us uh, the valuable keys that they have. And Ms. Christy, you are another one that for many years have worked uh, alongside ministries and serving families and so forth. And so what would you, what kind of advice and counsel would you give to uh, those church leaders? When you ask me that question, the thought comes to mind when Jesus was at the well mm. and he spoke to the woman at the well, but he spoke through the Holy Spirit to her woundedness. Yes. But he didn't rebuke her. Mm -hmm. He spoke healing. Yes. He spoke love. He spoke compassion. And through his gentle words, though they saw mm -hmm. the sin in her life and mm. called it for what it was, it caused her to know him as her Savior, her Messiah. Yes. And through that simple exchange of words, she led that whole entire village to come see yeah. him yeah. Mm -hmm. and meet him. Mm -hmm. So likewise, as a leader, as a teacher, as an instructor, we must always hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the urgings. Mm -hmm. Yes. A hupo a kuo, a, <laughs> a sermon you preached many years ago, yeah. means to sit with your ear cocked mm -hmm. to hear the word of God, mm -hmm. that rhema, that word for that person, mm -hmm. and then be quick to go and obey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That alone will open doors to people that no other efforts can open. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. To stand and just speak only what the Holy Spirit gives you to yes. give. I can't tell you how many times patients have sat on the other side of the room and said, how did you know that? Yeah. How do you know that? I don't know that. Yeah. God knows that. Yeah. He just yeah. speaks through me. Awesome. And that in and itself is evidence yeah. that God loves that individual Absolutely. so much mm -hmm. 
that he led them to that Absolutely. counselor. He spoke to the counselor to give them those words, yes. to allure them and call them and draw them to him mm -hmm. so that he could heal them and, and heal their heart, mm -hmm. heal their soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Numbers 26, the messianic blessing, the ironic blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yeah. The Hebrew interpretation is very different and it's so much deeper. Mm -hmm. We know it's God's will that we be healed. Mm -hmm. It wow. says, and give you peace directly from the Hebrew and may Yahweh, mm -hmm. Yahweh, your heavenly father, he who exists, set in place all that you need to be whole and complete so that you can walk in victory moment by moment by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And may he give you supernatural health, supernatural peace, mm -hmm. welfare, mm -hmm. safety, soundness, tranquility, mm -hmm. prosperity, perfection, fullness, rest, harmony, as well as the absence of agitation and discord. Wow. If you are willing to be a vessel mm -hmm. and you stand before that wounded soul, yes. mm -hmm. God will use you and unction you through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yes. to speak exactly what that particular yes. person needs to hear mm -hmm. and know that their Creator speaks That's and powerful. loves them. Absolutely. That's powerful. I love that. Thank you yes, for that. I love that. And in with families, uh, Tanya, you, and Pastor Glenn, mm -hmm. and you, you've been serving here for many, many years, and you've served families here also. Uh, tell us how we can be more impactful in our reach of families mm -hmm. uh, mm. as we minister life to them. Absolutely. If I can, I'm going to start with the scripture, um, Proverbs 20 and 5. It mm -hmm. says, the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man or woman of understanding will draw it out. And so we have to, to learn, I encourage pastors that to realize that when people are dealing, families, couples are dealing with issues, that a person of deep understanding and operating in God's wisdom can draw those things out. Oftentimes we find that um, in a couple, most times the men are reluctant to coming in to getting counseling and getting help. Women will tend to run to get that help, but their husbands are reluctant to do so. Mm -hmm. And so especially if, if we're talking to a male leader in a church, you know, encouraging um, this brother to come forth and, and to sit with you. And it's not creating a place of non-judgment. Um, mm -hmm. We often say coming for you as the person who's doing the counseling, coming to a place of zero so that none of your emotion, none of your That's opinion good. is there in place and people feel safe. Yes. We often say to create a, a space, give people space and grace so that they understand that you're not here to judge me. You are here to help, to hear me and to listen and that you're going to give me the opportunity to get out what it is that I need to get out and then help me find God's wisdom to lead me into a place of corrected thinking. Mm. Outstanding. Correct. Dr. Debbie, I'd like for you to kind of wrap this up for us and uh, ac actually close us out uh, as we consider, again, providing guidance for professionals and even ministers in the sure. church in terms of how we can be more impactful in reaching our congregations. Absolutely. I want to say to, especially to the leaders in ministry and to those that are professionals that you know, self-care is very important. So I want to encourage you to take care of yourself. There's a scripture in the Bible where Jethro, who is Moses' father-in-law, mm -hmm. Jethro is talking to Moses and he says, what are you doing? As leader, you're going to wear yourself out. You're, you're trying to do too much. He said, back up and disseminate some of your task. In other words, get some strategies that are more effective for your own mental health. 
And so I want to say to leaders today to just stop. We've all gone through what I call mass traumatic experiences. Listen, the last year and a half just didn't happen to your clients. It happened to you too. Yes. So you have got to take care of your health and well-being in order to better serve them. So I want to encourage you to take care of self today. Just stop and do that. That would be my word to leaders today. That is so powerful and so good. You know, and I would also have to add to this, uh, as a pastor, speaking to other pastors, you know, one of the things that God told me during the COVID experience, and for us here in Louisiana, also, you add to that, two hurricanes, a tropical storm, yes. and then a flood. Yes, sir. Uh, he says, you cannot go back and do things the way you did them before. You cannot just pick up where you left off and do church as usual. So this, what you've seen here today, is an example of one of the expressions that God gave me for a Sunday morning. Pastors, listen to me. For a Sunday morning, God says, do this. Yes, sir. You can still teach the word of God. You can still get the gospel out to the people. It can still be anointed. The Holy Spirit can still flow and healing can still occur. And you can manage uh, to get to the needs of the people in a practical way. This is, this is one of several things he told me to do. And, and I've just decided that we're going to do it. And we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit in this post-COVID expression of his goodness to humanity. And so I guess I'm challenging pastors that are watching that may see this, mm -hmm. have the courage to hear from God and just do exactly what God yeah. tells you to do. Don't worry about how many people you'll lose or who will go to other churches because they don't think this is real church and all that kind of stuff. If you will hear from God and let him guide you and just simply do what he tells you to do, you'll be blessed. You won't have to worry about a thing. I believe that you were blessed by what you experienced here tonight along with our panel of mental health professionals. I just believe it's important that we understand that God is in the business of reaching all of our needs and meeting all of our needs, including mental health needs. And so, and you've learned tonight that that can happen biblically. It can happen in the realm of the spirit for you with professionals that are trained in this particular realm of health. You don't have to walk this path alone. There is help available to you. And we're putting up information for you right now where these are tools that are available, being made available to you. You can reach out to these organizations and, and these institutions for assistance. They have resources available for you. Get what you need. Be made strong. Be made well in the name of Jesus. So tonight, as we end this particular uh, episode, I want you to know that Dr. Debbie and I love you dearly, and we believe for God's best to manifest into your life. And until next time, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying thank you for joining me for Power Talk, and keep walking by faith. Join us for our next in-person encounter here at New Life Church International. 3000 East Goche Road, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas look forward to seeing you. For your safety, facial coverings will be required. Now you can help us serve our local community and bridge the gap of food insecurities among families right here at home. New Life is currently receiving canned good food items only. Your donations of canned food items will make a difference for so many families affected by the 2020 hurricanes and COVID-19. Learn ways in which you can help today. Call or text us at 337-433-2222.
1111 or visit us online at nlcinternational.org and click on Food Bank. See, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE.